Alright guys, Piff here. Welcome back. Today, let's talk about media converters. WTF is a media converter. Media converters or media cons are used in networking where a communication protocol is converted from one cable media to another. In this video, from copper UTP network cable to fiber optics, then back again to copper UTP network cable. But why? As a little background, let me tell you that I've always preferred using copper UTP cables ever since I learned how to do networking. I teach them in class, made wiring plans for work, I even did my own wiring plan and implementation in my house. I find the media to be more secure, reliable, and a faster way of passing data across the network than the more commonly used Wi-Fi. So why fiber? Unshielded twisted pair cables uses electrical pulses to transmit data. On the other hand, Fiber uses light, which can transmit 4 bits of data per second and offers higher bandwidth. A proper fiber connection can also be up to a few kilometers long. A UTP cable? Even just reaching 100 meters will surely give you a stable connection, possibly due to data loss. Finally, the best reason, the price. I know it depends on the quality and name and especially where you bought it from, the maximum length of an STP or UTP cable you can buy is only around 300 meters. And it's very hard to find a 300 meter box below a thousand pesos. But a kilometer of FTTP cable box is as low as 800 pesos only. In the Philippines, sad to say, media cons are used to retail internet subscriptions. They're doing this usually in very remote place where ISPs don't care to have lines. I'll talk about more on this later. But before we proceed, let me give my thanks to all of you guys who continuously supported this channel. This is our channel. You can like, share, comment your thoughts. Just be civil. And if you still haven't yet, please do subscribe for more unboxings and tutorials. I still have a lot in store. With that said and done, here are my new media converters and how to connect them. Let's do this. You can get this media converter singly or by pair. I got the latter for 479 pesos, around $8.50. The label says it comes in three varieties. I wonder what category mine is, cause I bought a 100 base TX model supporting single mode fiber up to 25 kilometers. This is the box for HTB 3100A. I guess these are the other models they are selling. I really have no issues with these boxes but cheap items could have been cheaper without them. The two boxes are identical except for the A and B stickers slapped on the print. On each box, we have a 5 volts DC power supply. And the Netlink HTB3100. No manual here. The metallic housing has ventilations on each side a power port at the back, and SC fiber and LAN ports as well as LEDs at the front. We are supposed to have a fiber subscriber connector or SC in the transmit or TX port. The SC connector is very common and very easy to buy. Just be sure to have this cable around if you want to use this media converter. The receive or RX port is shut off. I wonder if they did this intentionally. At the bottom is a sticker with the model name in it. I'm holding the A model. Now we go to model B. The items are exactly the same, except for the sticker at the bottom.
No manual is included in the package, but you can search for it. The website got some info on the features, specifications, as well as some necessary information if you are building your own fiber optic cable for the media converter. We are going to simulate common workflows of the media converter. This is A and this is B. Let's find out if they power on first. A is good and so is B. Here's a very cheap fiber optic patch cable I got earlier. This pre-made cable has a UPC-SC connector at the end. Link in the description. Before we insert the connectors, remove the dust caps first. If you look closely at the connectors, we can find keys or fins of sorts. You need to align them to the ports later. Before we proceed, also remove the dust caps from the media converters. On one end, align the fin and insert the connector to the media converter A's TX slot. Then insert the other end to the B's TX slot. When the two FX LEDs lights up, it means that the fiber connection is made. Here we have a UTP patch cable connected to my ISP's router. Connect it to the LAN port of media converter A. After inserting, the TX and FDX LEDs are now up and MediaCon A is now connected to my network. FDX means the connection is at full duplex mode. Here's another shorter UTP patch cable. One end should connect to MediaCon's VLAN port and the other end to your Wi-Fi device. I'm using TP-Link WR840N with its default settings. After a few seconds, all MediaCon B's LEDs were lit and my Wi-Fi also turned green which means it is now connected to the internet. My test router's name is Lilith. Let's try checking the speed test with it. So far, so good. Let's check what the media converter speed really is. I'm plugging in the cable directly to my laptop. Yeah, it's really 100 Mbps. I would like to point out that unfortunately with this setup, you will never achieve and utilize the promised higher bandwidth offered by a fiber cable because it's only 100 mbps with that said let's check out the next set because i was not satisfied i bought another set model number htb gs 38 pesos or around 10 us dollars I bundled it with another item to save shipping. It only comes in one box, not like the previous one. I got this with these clamps. I'm gonna use this on my next video so stay tuned. Like the HTB3100, this also comes with two 5V DC adapters. This one has a manual which contains vital information like the one we saw on the website. Except for the color and the LED labels, they look and feel the same as my previous media cons. Here I have the A and B models.
As I plug the CAT6 cable directly to my Omen's Gigabit LAN port, LED labeled 1000 lights up, indicating that the transmission is in 1000 Mbps or in Gigabit speed. Let's check the speed inside Windows. Ethernet status also indicates I have a Gigabit connection. By using a Gigabit MediaCon, my bandwidth is not capped. This is the advantage of using Gigabit devices if your plan is above 100 Mbps. However, one must also consider that you also need to have a Gigabit LAN port, Gigabit Wi-Fi or Switch, as well as a cable supporting this to go beyond the bandwidth capping. Look closely at the LEDs as I unplug the CAT6 cable from the back of my Omen laptop. Here, I am using a non-gigabit Wi-Fi router. Since I don't have a gigabit Wi-Fi router yet, you'll have to bear with this one. 100 on MediaCon B lights up, indicating that the connection is only 100 Mbps. MediaCon A on the other hand is still using gigabit since I connected it to my ISP's gigabit router and I'm also using CAT6 cable which also supports gigabit speed. Here I will connect to my Wi-Fi Lilith to test the speed. Wi-Fi status indicates that I am on around 200 to 300 Mbps. This is the Wi-Fi speed limit. And this doesn't mean that I am capable of having that speed since the MediaCon is set and locked only at 100 Mbps. The overall performance is roughly the same with the non-gigabit HTB3100 MediaCon I used earlier. Therefore, having a gigabit MediaCon is not required if your cable or device you're connecting with is also not gigabit capable. Super thanks to my generous shy friend over here who supplied me with around 300 plus meters of FTTP cable. Now I'm ready to rewire. With the two sets of media cons that I have, I recommend you choosing the gigabit version for obvious reasons. But if you're just using it to connect your cameras, IoT devices, or other devices that are expected to consume small amount of bandwidth, choose the 100 Mbps version. In terms of cables being used, the difference between a pre-made and a DIY fiber cable is that the pre-made is obviously more expensive. The good side is, you don't have to worry about splicing because it is plug and play. Terminating DIY cables are a pain especially if you don't have the proper tools. Speaking of, you can check out my other guide here. It's kind of intimidating at first, but if I can do it, so can you. The advantage of DIYing cables is that it is more affordable, especially when you're running very long lines. Also, you can have the benefit of making shorter custom length cables. Plus, it's fun to learn. When talking about length, there is this thing called cable coupler. Having those is a must if you want to connect pre-made cables together. I don't generally advise this idea since they tend to get loose eventually and cause connection failures. Then, I would like to clarify that a gigabit PediaCon may or may not improve your internet speed. It depends on your devices and cables that you're using on your network. Just hit me up in the comments down below if you have more questions about this. Media converters have been around in the Philippines, especially in the underground scene, for quite some time now. I only got interested with this when I thought of rewiring my home network, having a lower budget in mind. And not to do business, just to clarify. And I hope that you would also not do that. Because you know, some people here are retailers of internet where they use the media cons to sell a piece of their subscriptions to their neighbors and run kilometers of fiber optics just to serve their subscribers. I really have no issue with this genius hustle, but they're generally the reason why ISPs have monthly bandwidth cap. Some of them are also using the same public electrical poles to attach their cables. and. Some of them never follow the safe cabling standards. The poles eventually becomes a mess and becomes a hazard. But who can blame them 
If there's a demand for internet and the ISP is not around to serve, people will find ways. And they're also probably backed up by corrupted ISP personnel who sells these cables and tools to them. On the bright side, I think fiber is definitely gonna be the future of home networking because of its capabilities and affordability. Sad to say, it requires some practice just to splice and terminate the cables. Also the required tools, not to mention the fragility of glass fiber optics, would probably take a few decades before it will take off. I hope it will. And that's my take on the media converters and fiber optics in general. Check out my next video about the tools I use to splice and terminate cables. Hit like and comment down your thoughts down below. I may have missed something for sure. Subscribe for more and see you in the next one. That's it for now. Stay safe. Chablas.